Oh, yeah. You're not leaving early, are you? Okay. Sometimes people leave early to go do their communion things.
faithful, Lori. Indeed, he is our rock of ages. Amen. Welcome to all of you here today on this holiday uh, weekend, Sunday of Memorial Weekend. It's good to see all of you here in person, as well as all of our folks who may be worshiping online with us. Thank you for joining us as well. I uh, want to lift up just a few items, of course. If uh, you have not already picked up your communion packet, the two-in-one packets are available on the table right outside the sanctuary. Um, you will need it for later in the service. And there are some special ones that are already started if you have trouble peeling those little tabs. So uh, there's a couple of those out there for you. Just a reminder that due to the holiday tomorrow, our church office will be closed. We will be back at it on Tuesday morning at 8 in the morning. <clears throat> this week, elders, you will be meeting on Wednesday at 5.30 uh, via Zoom. Is that correct, Mr. Bob? Yep. Okay, good. So, um, oh, Andy, I'm sorry. I skipped, I skipped ahead of you. I apologize. So uh, I wrote in a note, and I skipped it. Uh, Today, we are starting a new worship series, My God is a Rock. And uh, as you notice, we have lots of rocks here for um, decoration. Hopefully, you notice them as you walked in to the church today as well. And so for four weeks, we're going to be um, going through some of the psalm, psalm verses and chapters and uh, hearing how God is our rock, how, he le how we can be led to the rock, He's our shelter, and um, so we hope that you will join us for the next, actually, five weeks. Next week, we will take a quick little break from our series, I know, after starting it today. Miss Diane is going to be gone next Sunday, and so um, our regional minister, Carolyn Reed, will be joining us next Sunday, so we hope you will join us so we can give her a warm Hazelwood welcome next Sunday, and then we will start the series again on June 13th. <clears throat> And speaking of next Sunday, to prepare for the second week of our series, when you come into worship, there's going to be some folks in the entryway with some colored pieces of construction paper. And uh, if you would be so kind to step onto those pieces of paper for us so that we may trace your feet, um, we're going to do that next Sunday for something that we need for June 13th. So if you could please oblige us with just a few seconds of your time next Sunday, that would be awesome. And then come on the 13th to figure out what we're going to do with them. And speaking of doing, uh, so for those of you who may not know, these are called cairns, and uh, they are used um, in many different ways. And uh, we will learn all about that during these next several weeks. But you will have an opportunity to build your own rock cairn. If you noticed when you entered the rotunda area, there were some tables there off on the left. I already built one as a little example. So after worship today, maybe you can go out and, and play with some rocks and build yourself a little cairn out there. And we'll have those available out there each Sunday during our worship series. So if you don't get it done this Sunday, you can maybe build one another Sunday. Okay, Miss Diane. I lost this. Okay, let me just finish. Mask, glasses, earrings, too many things, you know. I did want to say that I am going next week and I won't be here because it is the last Sunday that my husband will be in the pulpit at Carmel and then he is retiring. So it's his retirement Sunday and, and I want to be there with him. So thank you for understanding and I know you'll give a warm welcome to Carolyn Reed. So as Hazelwood Christian Church, you're moving into a new future with new leadership. And so it is good that we come together and that in worship and during the week in our prayer time, we do remember that we are not alone, that we go through this present time and into the future with God as our rock. And so we begin this series to remind ourselves that God is always with us. For we believe that God is our rock and our fortress a deliverer who delights in coming to the aid of those who seek the Lord. We believe that God is always moving the world toward justice and righteousness, 
and that we are invited to be agents of that movement. We believe that God is faithful and patient, that God does not give up on us or anything God created. We believe that God is near, always present in our troubles, sadness, loneliness, and fear. We place our hope in God because God alone is completely holy, trustworthy, and true. So thanks be to God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please stand as we sing together our opening song.
worship you for who you are. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you for who you are. For who you Let's go to our good God in prayer this morning. Almighty and most gracious God, we give you thanks for this day and for calling us here to your place of worship. We gather to praise your name for your faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Signs of your faithfulness are all around us. Love, mercy, forgiveness, new life, and the gifts of your son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Help us claim your faithfulness as we seek to increase our faithfulness to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> so I neglected to, to mention something real quick you might want to know before the end of our service today. Um, for our series, we will be singing a benediction refrain each Sunday after Miss Diane gives our benediction. And so we will be introducing that to you today. And then each Sunday we will be singing it. So hopefully by the end of the series, you'll be good and comfortable to sing it with us. <clears throat> so for our children's moment today, I am simply going to give a children's blessing. So um, we do not have any children here with us in the sanctuary, but children... At home, parents, if you are near your children, if you would want to lay your hand on them, either their shoulder or their head, or maybe hold their hands while I give this blessing on them. Children, may you remember this week that God is your rock. He is steady and strong. You can know that God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Even when life isn't good or people aren't good, God is always good and gives you strength to face anything, anytime. May God bless you, children. Thank you. Well, in addition, uh, living near Indianapolis to it being race weekend, it is also Memorial Day weekend. And so as we come to this time of prayer, we do lift up those who have uh, given their lives and their service on behalf of our country. I wonder if there are veterans among us, uh, and if there are, if you would stand right now that we might recognize you. Tony? Andy, all right. Can we just say thank you? <laughs> For we are so grateful that you took your time and uh, spent that time helping to protect us and keep us safe. We appreciate it. And with that, let us go to our Lord in prayer. Dear God, it's been a long week, and it feels like many things have happened that threaten us on many sides, for disease still threatens our world, division still threatens our nation, people are still killed in gun violence. All of these things leave us unsure of how to respond and in these times, we need to know that you are our rock now more than ever. So we're here, God. And we ask that you would direct our hearts and our minds and our spirits towards you. And fill us with your spirit of truth and understanding and hope. 
You remind us in your word that you are faithful to carry our burdens. You tell us you will renew our strength and you prom promise to give us rest as we come to you. So forgive us for the times we've worked so hard to be self-sufficient, forgetting our need for you, living independently of your spirit. Forgive us for letting fear and worry control our minds and for allowing pride and selfishness to wreak havoc over our lives. Forgive us for not following your ways or living distanced from your presence. Thank you, Lord, that your ways are far greater than our ways and your thoughts far deeper than our thoughts. Thank you that you make all things new. Thank you that you are close to the brokenhearted, that you hear our prayers, that you know our hearts. Thank you for your daily powerful presence in our lives and that we can be assured no matter what we're facing that your heart is towards us, your eyes are over us, and your ears are open to our prayers. For all this, we give you praise and honor, for your ways are just, merciful, and true. May we be faithful to your ways as we live our lives. We pray all this in the name of the one who most assuredly showed us your way, even Jesus, our Savior, our friend. Amen. Our special music today is participatory should you choose to join us um, on parts. This is a fairly new song um, by David Crowder, and it um, came out just in time for our, our series um, for this, this, this Sunday right here, uh, Good God Almighty. Sometimes people use that phrase in a bad way, but it can also be used in a good way. So I'm going to teach you real quick there's going to be an echo part that Wendy will lead, and then um, we will echo her. Let me find the pitch. For you. Oh, we will answer. That's right, not answer. So she's going to go. Tell me, is he good? He's good. Tell me, is he God? He's God. He is good God Almighty. So you're going to get a chance to do that just a couple times. But I've also got the words up there for the chorus and another little fun part. Just sing. God just loves to hear his children praise him. <clears throat> That's right. <laughs> Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me. Is he God? He's God. He is good God Almighty. You say your love goes on forever, that your mercy never stops. So why would I assume you'd be somebody that you're not? Like the sun in the morning, I know you're going to be there every day. So what on earth would make me be afraid? Good God Almighty. Find me, praising you. 
Hear these words of hope from the Hebrew scriptures. Through them, may we catch a glimpse of God's grace. Following God's leading, the whole community of Israel journeyed in the wilderness, moving from one place to another. Eventually, they set up camp at Rephidim, but there wasn't a drop of water for the people to drink. Thirsty. Thirsty. The people were thirsty. thirsty. The animals were thirsty. thirsty. Even the very earth they walked on thirsty. was thirsty. They begged Moses in desperation, thirsty. give us water to drink. But thirsty. Moses said, why are you complaining to me? And why are you trying to put God to the test? Thirsty. But the people were so thirsty, they continued thirsty. to implore him. Please tell us we didn't come all this way out of the horror of slavery in Egypt, across the Red Sea, through miles of desert wilderness, to die here of thirst. Then Moses cried out to God. What should I do with these people, my beloved community? They're about ready to pick up all these rocks and hurl them at me. God said to Moses, Take some of the leaders with you and go on ahead of the rest of the people. Also, take along the walking stick you used to perform miracles on the Nile River in Egypt. When you get to the rock at Horeb, I'll be present with you. Strike that rock with the stick and water will gush out of it for the people to drink. So Moses struck the rock, and the water flowed. Moses named the place Massa, which means test, and Meribah, which means complaining, because the people of Israel had complained to Moses and tested God when they said, is God here with us or not? And our second scripture reading is from Psalm chapter 18, verses 1 and 2. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. 
Anybody thirsty? <laughs> I wish I had some water for you. Well, I want to show you a map today and tell you about a little town that I visited several years ago, southeast of London in the county of Kent, about an hour's drive from there, from London. There's a very old English Tudor village that only has one street through the whole town. It is called Chittingston in Kent County, England. It's part of the National Trust of England, and they've owned Chittingston Village almost in its entirety, excluding the school, the castle, and the church since 1939. It is the best example of a Tudor village left in the country, and it is perfectly preserved. The buildings have been used in several television programs and films. Well, near the town center stands an exceptionally large stone which has been there for centuries. It's called the Chiding Stone, hence the name Chiddingston comes from Chiding Stone. Legend has it, there are several legends, but the one that uh, captured my imagination said that the name is derived from being the place where offenders were brought and judged and punished. It's a big stone. Every few years, I take a trip with two of my seminary friends, Barbara and Renee. We've all lived so far from each other uh, because of the ministries that we've been about through all these years that every once in a while we get together and take one of these vacations and it's like a reunion of a sorts. And so a few years ago, we were in England and we traveled to this village. And so this is Renee showing us how judgment might have been meted out back in the day. I can imagine the crowds gathering in the midday heat to witness offenders coming to the rock for their day of judgment. I hold that chiding stone in contrast to the rock that we are celebrating with worship today, that with God as our rock, the one that we heard about in Scripture, this rock that the people of Israel uh, needed to uh, find the water that they needed to assuage their thirst. For the congregation of the Israelites wandering in the wilderness, they'd escaped Egypt, they'd crossed the Red Sea, they received meat and manna from heaven, signs that God loved them and wanted to provide for them. But now here they are, much to their dismay, they discover they're thirsty and there is no water for them to drink. And so they become, instead of a thankful community, a quarreling crowd, a complaining crowd, a doubting crowd, anything but a wise crowd or a grateful community. And their despair feeds on itself. They become demanding. We've never done that, have we? They impugn Moses' motives for bringing them into the wilderness. They're about to pick up the stones that are at their feet and fling them at Moses. Moses is ready for some crowd control. He needs it for a miracle that will bring this unruly mob to its senses. Enough already, replies God. Go on ahead of the people, Moses. Take your staff. I'll meet you at the rock at Horeb. Strike that rock, and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. And sure enough, the rock produces water, just as God promised it would. And Moses called that place Massa and Meribah, meaning test and quarrel because the people had quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, is the Lord among us or not? You have this contrast, the chiding stone, a rock of judgment and punishment, the rock of Moses' wilderness, a rock of providence and supply for what is needed at the time. This is our sermon series for the next few weeks. And I'll highlight how God provides what we need in life, that God is our rock. And as Psalm 18 says it so beautifully, I love you, O Lord, my strength. 
The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So this morning I thought I might ask you to take a few moments and think about how God has acted in your life to give you what you needed at a particular time in your life. Think about a time when you needed God. When you faced a difficult challenge in your life, when you needed help desperately, did you experience God seeking to help work in this situation? And be honest, did it take more time than you thought? Or did it seem to never come at all, leaving you frustrated and worn out? But did God find ways to be available to you, to provide for you in that time? And then think about this. How long did it take you to figure that out? How long did it take for you to be thankful about that? In this psalm that we read today, it takes a historical look, for in it, King David celebrates the completion of a lot of season of uncertainty in his life. And he sees in his life the faithfulness of God, the experience of God's kindness and deliverance. Perhaps you can think of a similar time, a moment when you could breathe a sigh of relief because your nightmare had finally come to an end. Perhaps you'd take yourself back to the moment when you realized, I know God was there and God helped me through this. Maybe you haven't taken the time to look back. Maybe you need to do that. I can attest to the experience of God taking longer than I thought was needed to answer prayers. And on more than a few occasions, I have prayed the following prayer. God, I know you have eternity, but I got 70 or 80 or maybe a few more years, so could you just speed it up a little bit? If we're honest, we all get impatient with God at times, like the Hebrew people in the wilderness, we complain. God listens to our prayers. God listens to our needs, even when it comes as criticism rather than praise. Why'd you bring us here to die of thirst? They complained. God could have shook off those questions and left them to fend for themselves in the wilderness, but instead, God made a way for them to find what they needed. Perhaps we can learn a few things from God about how to accept criticism when it comes our way. God did that, accepted the criticism, and lived out grace even in the midst of that criticism. Moses did too. Moses took the criticism of the people, and he did these things with it, listened to the people, continued to listen, You know, when somebody's giving you criticism, do you, it's so easy to do, we all kind of do it, take a step back and just kind of shut yourself off from it. Don't want to hear it, don't need to hear it, not going to listen. But God still listened. Moses listened to the people. Even the most intentionally hurtful criticism has a grain of truth buried in it. And in Moses' case, the Israelites complained, reminded him of how dependent those people were on him for their constant care and well-being. And it confirmed to Moses his dependence on the Lord for his strength and ability to meet the needs and to lead the people. Moses, God, in the midst of criticism, continued to listen. Second, Moses did this. He learned from this situation. He learned that he could not do everything himself. 
You know, one of the critical moments, comments that Moses heeded came not from the Hebrews, but from God. When Moses felt at a loss and overwhelmed and berated by his people, God said, get some others, get some elders. Lean on somebody else in addition to yourself. Take the elders with you. And it's a good reminder for us that when we're feeling down or criticized or at sort of at the bottom of things, God says, don't try to do it all alone. You have this community. You have each other. Let them, let me be a part of going with you to face whatever it is in life that you need to face. Moses was used to doing things on his own, taking the big risk alone, but God didn't want just a hero and just one leader. God was building a community of faith. It's like that for congregations as well. It's not just the minister who does the ministry, but the minister leads a congregation, and together we accomplish big things, good things for God. Building a community means taking a chance, taking a chance on partnership, on being interdependent with each other, on giving, and also what's probably sometimes even harder, on receiving when we need it from the community. God was teaching Moses, you're not doing this alone, even though you're the leader. You have a community that joins you in this. And God was creating that community. We need to remember that God has given us each other so we don't have to live our best and our worst days alone. So when you're having those times, remember that you have a community of friends who can and want to be there for you, want to help you, want to walk with you when you are having difficult times. So I encourage you, be there for each other. And when you have need, receive from each other. Third thing Moses learned, he learned to trust that while he felt like he was out there on a limb in that desert, taking these people to God knows where, thankfully God did know where, but he wasn't alone in that. He wasn't on his own doing it. That wherever he went, God was there and went there before him. Not only did he have a community who joined him on life's journey, but God always was going before him, making a way. You know that saying from Star Trek that we would go where no one has gone before? It's not true. Because wherever we go, God goes before us. Sometimes it doesn't feel like that. It may seem like God has abandoned us at times, but remember that God is going before you wherever you go in your future making a way. Our choice is that we can complain about it or we can offer thanks to God for the life we are given. You know, I read about this uh, Sunday school teacher who one Sunday gave all of her students two things, a lollipop and a stone, small stone. And she said, I want you to put the stone in your shoe and unwrap that lollipop and put it in your mouth. And then I want you to just walk across the room, walk around the room for a while. And so they all put the lollipop in their mouths and they put the stones in their shoes and they started to walk. And she started asking them, so what's it like? What's going on? What are you experiencing? And the children said, it hurts. I don't like it. I don't like having this rock in my shoe. It makes it hard to walk. And they went on, and they get all this complaining and moaning and groaning. And she said, I want you to remember this time. Because all that you're telling me has to do with 
the pain that you're experiencing, that rock in your shoe. Not one of you has talked about the delicious taste of the lollipop in your mouth. Now granted, that was a Sunday school class and those were children, but talk on it. I think there's a lesson for us too. When we find ourselves full of complaints about what God is, what do we think that God is doing now? I don't understand it. I don't like it. We forget that we can taste any time in life and see ways that the Lord is good. So as you go through difficult times in life, challenging times in your life, in your personal lives, and as a community of faith, remember that God goes before you, that God listens to your need, even your complaining, that God makes a way, that God does provide for you. God will not offer a chiding stone of judgment but the very water of life itself. So remember, in the midst of all that's happening, even when it's not so good, taste and see that the Lord is good, that God is your rock. Let's pray. God, forgive us for the times when we complain without taking the time to notice that you are there before us, that you are providing for us, that you are making a way even in the midst of difficult times. Bless Hazelwood Christian Church, Lord, and all of those who gather as a community of faith here, that as they go forward in this challenging, difficult time, that they too may know you are with them always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we come to this time when we sing a song of response. And when we have a moment to maybe offer up to God a prayer of thanksgiving and gratitude or You know, if you want, I guess you could offer up a complaint, too, because God still listens to those. But in the midst of it all, we know that God is with us and leading us. Let's remember that as we stand and sing our song.
You may be seated. And it is out of that goodness that we respond with gifts of gratefulness, hearts of gratefulness, and with our offerings of ourselves, the money that we give to help make that known to the world. So may God receive those offerings also. Let us sing our song of communion.
For indeed he does stand with us and by our sides, even Jesus our Lord. You know, there was a little boy who was on a walk with his father. And they were walking along a road and they found this big boulder sitting on the side of the road. And the boy said to his father, do you think if I push this with all my might I could move it? And dad says, well, go ahead, give it a try. So the little boy went up to it and just pushed with all his might, and he said, I, I'm just not strong enough. I can't do it. And father said, no, you didn't use everything you had to move it because you got my help. And together, they were able to move that rock. It's what Christ offers us as we gather around this table. You're not pushing those rocks all by yourself. You got my help to do it too. And so as Jesus took his community of friends, his disciples, and at that last Passover meal, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to them saying, this bread is my body, which is broken for you to help you push those rocks. And every time you eat of it, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup also and passed it among the disciples and said, This cup, it's the new covenant of my blood, poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sin. Each time you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Lord, we gather here at your table today in thanksgiving, thanking you first for the blessing of your Son, who died for all of us, asking you to bless these symbols of his body and blood as we prepare to share together. Giving thanks, Lord, for this beautiful day and for the abundant blessings that you bring into our lives, asking you to help us remember that when days are hard, you are our strength and our refuge, our rock of salvation. Be with us, Lord, through these changing times 
as the world continues to move forward and open back up. Help us to be a light for you and to share your love with others. Help us to remember that we are all your children as we pray together the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. this Memorial Day Sunday, stir our hearts, O Lord, with patriotism and thanksgiving as we remember those who gave themselves for our safety and freedom. Bless our country with your wisdom, your love, and your compassion. O God, thank you for satisfying our every desire and need through every good and perfect gift you give to us, especially the gift of your Son. Your word says we honor you when we give back the first fruits of our wealth. Accept our tithes and offerings today as a gift of worship to you. Multiply our gifts to be used to further the work of this congregation in our community and beyond. Now, O oh Lord, to you be all praise, honor, and glory forever and ever, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand as we sing together our closing song. So let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another, 
in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace with your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God through him. Go in that peace. And the congregation said, God's peace.